In this video, I'm going to be talking about the 10 most important things that you need to do to stay healthy and lose weight while on go. Stay tuned. Hey guys, what's going on? Shane, it's Shane Hubbard Fit. Today's video is gonna be all about tips that you can use for staying healthy on the go, whether you're traveling through airports or you have long commutes or maybe you're just really, really busy and you don't have a lot of time to do things like meal prep and you want to stay healthy and possibly even lose weight while you're on the go. So before we get started today, guys, really quickly, go ahead in the comment section below, tell me what is your favorite food? I'm a huge food person, I love food. It's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about nutrition. I'd love to hear what your favorite type of food is. All right, so let's go ahead and get into tip number one. Eat smarter, not less. So when we're trying to lose weight, it's pretty common knowledge at this point that we need to eat less. But what if there was an easier way to eat less than eating less? If we focus on the quality of our food, if we focus on eating healthier whole foods, it's a lot easier to eat less without feeling like you're eating less. Because one of the hardest things with losing weight is actually eating less food. You consciously reduce the amount of calories you consume. But if you could just focus on the quality of your food, you'll naturally eat less without feeling like you're starving yourself. So that's tip number one. All right, so let's get into tip number two. Tip number two is prioritize protein when you're out and about. So whenever you go to a restaurant, nine times out of 10, they're gonna serve you less protein than you actually need. And that's because protein is expensive for restaurants, fast food places to actually produce and put on the menu. Obviously that drives the price, means that you're probably less likely to buy it. Plus it saves them money and helps them make more money by giving you cheaper options than they would if they were giving you protein. So what you wanna do when you're eating outside of the house is you wanna focus on asking for more protein. Places like Chipotle will give you double protein. If you go to places like Burger King or even McDonald's and you get like a grilled chicken sandwich, you can ask for double chicken or double protein. Not every single place is going to give you that option, but nine times out of 10, if you just ask for it, they'll probably just charge you a little bit more, which is fine because it saves you from having to go find food later on or from snacking. And at least you know that the extra amount of calories you're getting is from protein. And that's what we wanna prioritize when we're eating outside the house. All right, so let's go into tip number three. Look at menus ahead of time before you go to the place you're going to eat. If you're a pilot, if you're somebody who commutes a lot, if you are somebody who travels a lot either for business or just for pleasure, you want to make sure that the places that you're going to eat at are predetermined. You already know where you're going to eat so that you can figure out exactly what you need to order when you get there. If you get to a restaurant and you're starving, you're gonna order the thing that tastes and sounds the most delicious, right? Well, there's nothing wrong with that from time to time, but if you do that every single time, you're really not gonna focus on trying to get the healthiest option. So the best thing you can do is know where you're going to eat ahead of time or know the general restaurants and places you're going to eat ahead of time. Look at their menus, most every single restaurant these days and even fast food joint has some type of menu online that you can look at and you can go ahead and pick some items out that you can, you can have when you get there and you can order. That way you're not dealing with the anxiety of trying to figure out what's healthy right now. Plus, if you leave it up to your willpower, there's a good chance you're not going to pick the healthiest option. So planning ahead of time is really one of the most useful tips for eating healthy on the road. All right, so now we're on tip number four. Tip number four is gonna be all about prepping snacks ahead of time. So whether you're driving somewhere, going by train, going by plane, whatever it is that you're doing when you're traveling, or maybe you're just super busy and you don't have a lot of time to make meals, if you can prep some very easy travel snacks, it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of money, and it's gonna make sure that you're getting the high quality protein, high quality fats that you need to get throughout the day. They're gonna make you feel good, make you feel satiated, and give you plenty of energy. So I've created an entire PDF that shows you all of these different things. If you want to download it, you can go in the description down below. It'll say free PDF or free ebook. You can go ahead and click on that and download that. It's not only going to have all of these tips on it, but it's also going to have some snack suggestions, a grocery list, and then even a prep meal guide that you can kind of plan ahead of time in case you're traveling for a long time. All right, so let's go right into tip number five. Take your workout anywhere. One of the biggest struggles that my clients and even people that reach out to me on social media face is getting a good workout when they're on the road. The easiest thing you can do for yourself, if you're someone who travels a lot, who spends a lot of time in hotels or even airports, and you don't have access to a gym, 
is to use your own body weight as a source of exercise. You can do plenty of push-ups, squats, burpees, jump lunges. You can do a ton of stuff with just your body weight at a park or even in your hotel room. So utilize your body weight as a form of exercise. All right, tip number six, intermittent fast to save money and to burn fat. So you kill two birds with one stone on this. Plus, if you're traveling by plane or traveling over time zones, it can help a lot with jet lag. So what is intermittent fasting? Well, you've probably heard a little bit about intermittent fasting as it's become really, really popular the last couple of years, but it's basically spending time not eating versus time eating. So you predetermine a certain amount of time that you're not going to eat. For most people, it's anywhere between 12 to 16 hours. And a perfect example of this would be having dinner no later than 8 p.m., going to sleep, waking up the next morning, not having anything with calories in it, so not having any cream in your coffee, sugar in your coffee, no breakfast, waiting all the way until you get to lunch, having your lunch, and that would break your fast and you know, anywhere between four to 16 hours. The reason this works so well when you're traveling is you really don't have time to eat anyway, right? You're traveling either by plane or maybe you're driving and you, know, you really don't need to eat because if you've eaten in the last 16 to 20 hours, you're probably fine. So intermittent fasting kind of refines exactly when you're going to eat and makes it easier to know when you're supposed to be eating calories and when you're not supposed to be eating calories. All right, so now we're gonna go into tip number seven, which is going to be always pack water. Now this might be kind of obvious to some of you, but you always need to have water. You can survive a much longer amount of time without food, but with, without water, you really can't survive that long. And you're not going to have a good quality of life and you're not gonna be cognitively aware if you're not drinking up enough water. So when you're traveling, pack as much water as you possibly can. If you're going through an airport, the best thing you can do is bring a reusable water bottle or something like a hydro flask or a Yeti where you can fill the water once you get into the airport so you don't have to buy the outrageous priced water that they sell in airports. But always have water with you. And even if you just take a couple of sips every hour, at least you're staying hydrated and that's gonna make it so much easier to travel and to not have a miserable time. All right, so tip number eight. No, there we go, tip number eight. So tip number eight is all about planning where you're going to eat. We already talked a little bit about making sure you look ahead at the menu and try to pick a couple of options, but let's say that you're traveling by airport and you're not really sure where you're gonna be in the airport. Well, you could look ahead at you know terminal blank and figure out what kind of options they have nearby. And then you could look at some of the menu items on there and say, okay, well, they have this grilled chicken sandwich, which is better than the fried chicken sandwich. I'll get the grilled chicken sandwich. It's pretty straightforward. And it's pretty easy to do that when you know where you're going to land or what general area you're gonna be in. So that's tip number eight. All right, so tip number nine. Tip number nine focuses on using ice packs and lunch bags for those people that are going to be traveling just short distances and really need just need a meal for an entire day and they're planning on coming home later. So obviously using ice packs and having a lunch bag makes things easier because you can take things like meal prep with you. But if you're not able to meal prep, you can still take healthier options with you that can stay cool. Things like Greek yogurts or fruits and vegetables or even maybe something that you've had as a leftover that you want to keep cool so you can eat it. So when applicable, when you can actually make this work for you, using ice packs and lunch bags are pretty easy to make things easier for yourself. All right, so final tip of the day is tip number 10. And this isn't really so much a tip as it is, it's some advice that I'm going to give you. Follow me on social media, all right? If you follow me on social media, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on YouTube, obviously, because you're watching it here, you can stay attuned with what I'm not only talking about, but you can connect with me. You can ask me questions. You can say, hey, Shane, what would you do in this scenario? Hey, I'm staying at Burger King, or I'm, eating, I'm staying at Burger King. I'm eating at Burger King tomorrow. What would be the best option? Reach out, connect with me. I'm going to be your, be your biggest resource. So if you're willing to connect with me and willing to say what's up, I'm willing to help you out in any way I can. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell so that when I upload a video to YouTube, you guys get a notification. That way you can check it out as soon as possible. Thanks for all the comments you've left down below. Please don't forget to tell me what your favorite food was. And then last but not least, if you don't mind, like this video. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. I will see you in a future video. All right, tip number four, prep healthy, no, erase that. We're not using this, no. <laughs> so there's lots of snacks that you can grab and put in your bag or even go through your, um, Thank you.